Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to cover the process of painting Darkside from uh, Berserk 3D Studios or uh, Berserk Patreon. Uh, I think this was last month's release. Uh, it's printed at 1 6 scale, approximately 1.5 litres, maybe just over, uh, of Elevue resin printed on the Elevue Saturn. Um, I use predominantly transparent resin and I've taken a remote uh, powered uh, LED lights, uh, put that into the base and then fed the wire up this leg um, into the chest and mainly just for the head, although you'll see there is some glow that comes from the body as well. Um, and finally, just as an apology in advance, um, I uh, the, the phone, uh, the storage kept on cutting out so it there you go. Um, yeah, the phone storage kept cutting out, which meant that uh, the, the footage is a little bit choppy, uh, but I've tried to edit it as best as possible, and I believe it covers 90 plus percent of the process that I've been through. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoy, and all the best. So this is the dark side model from uh, Berserk Studios. I've uh, printed the model up so far, primed it in black, and then done a zenithal primer uh, highlight over the top, as you can probably see. Um, I've also fitted some uh, lighting through the base, up through the leg, hence why it's all together and glued in, um, into the head and into the chest. Uh, and then finally, just masked off some of the uh, the key skin areas, but I wasn't overly neat because um, it's going to be quite easy to, to neaten up with black afterwards. So for the armor, I'm going to be using uh, just some cheap metallics. So I'm going to start with purple coming under, uh, coming from underneath and then over the top with a bluish purple. And then after that, I'll decide I might go over with a, with another blue. So um, yeah, I'll come back and I will start the painting process. Okay, so for the purple, I've just got it in the airbrush. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of hit it from underneath. I don't wanna to get too much. Uh, one, because uh, I use transparent resin, so you will, you will be able to see kind of through the cracks. So I don't want to uh, block that up too much, uh, but also, as I said, I just want it to be a, a slight tint to the overall blueness of the armour. So uh, apologies, uh, my phone storage ran out. So this is the finished piece with the purple. Um, I probably did about three coats in the end just because I find, especially over the, the black areas, <clears throat> it doesn't sit as well. So it's it's not uh, it's not very uh, bright. I mean, it's maybe some of the areas where the whites hit, but overall it's just sort of hitting the corners and the slight under underside of everything um, with a bit of purple so I've now mixed in the blue into the airbrush and uh, there we go <clears throat> and I just want to start now coming over the top um, with the blue this I reckon is going to probably be more like five or six coats maybe even more than that but as I said I will Keep going uh, until I'm happy. Okay, so uh, here's it after. This is it after the first. I mean, good couple of layers, but I'm not ha really happy with the blue. I think it's a bit too light and still too much purple in there. So I used the same uh, bluish purple, but I added in some alcohol ink to it as well, a blueberry alcohol ink. So hopefully you can see now it's a lot darker, hopefully. 
Um, and I'm just going to carry on going over the tops of it with, um, with this darker blue. Okay, <clears throat> there's a lot more blue on camera than it is in real life, but yeah, oh, I like that. Okay, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to let that dry, uh, come unmask it. I think I might add a bit of depth in with some washes and, and then I'll uh, get onto the skin. Okay, so I've just uh, mixed up some cheap acrylic with a lot of water, so it's a uh, super watery black acrylic um, and I'm just now again I can get it on camera um, just like picking out areas where I just want a bit more shadow and depth to be um, this is really not an exciting part of the process it's just so the airbrush can sometimes knock it out and I don't want to go in and add too much depth with the, like, the black under the airbrush so I'm just gonna go around and just pick out some of these shadows or so some of these lines just think it will kind of break the break the color up a bit you can see i'm not being super neat about it but just kind of getting in those lines and as you can see it just helps break up the shape and i think really shows the detail in the model uh, again i'm not going to worry about this part this could be and well that uh, this part's going to be skin again so i'll paint that black So I'll come back to that once uh, I've kind of taken everything apart and probably add a bit more depth once I've added in some silver. Okay, so I've kind of unbandaged him um, and I've got the same uh, watered down black acrylic and what I'm doing is just going into all of these uh, recesses between the arms and the and the armour, or sorry, the skin and the armour, um, quite heavily just because I'm going to keep on going around some of these areas where the blues got onto the skin and I just for the moment would first keep it as some shade then uh, uh sorry so, yeah yeah I'd first keep some sh shade in there before I add in the green tone so I want to use a green wash for the skin before I dry brush uh, a grey and possibly even a bit of white over it as well. I do want this character to pop kind of a bit more comic book colours on a, on a on a real life dark side. Sorry, I got a bit bored last night and I just added the silver there, but nothing else has changed since the last bit. Um, so now for the skin, I want to add a bit of depth um, and colour. Annoyingly, all the reference photos, um, <clears throat> he basically seems to be, in comics, he's always grey, but in the, all of the Zack Schneider film, 
there just always seems to be a green kind of tint to him. Um, and it kind of reminds me more of like a, a Jurassic type of skin than it does of just some sort of like, um, like stone, as it were. So anyway, the point being is I'd like to add some sort of earthy and skinny undertones before I then do some dry brushings of grey over the top. So for that, I've got three different washers, uh, Agrax Earth Shade, Anthonian Camo Shade, and then your trusty Nuln Oil. So I'm going to have all of these open, and I'm just going to kind of sporadically get them over everything. Um, probably mostly black, and then I'm going to start touching in the other colours. So I'm going to wa water down my brush a lot, just because I don't, I don't like... Um, uh, how stark some of these wash paints can be so it's just nice to get them a bit more watered down in my opinion I'll focus on this arm to start with so just oh shit it's a bit too excessive I just want to really get that all up into the model I don't want it to be too extreme no. start adding in the depth more so I don't get it everywhere I want to get it to most places and then now I'll take a bit of the camo shade and I can add some of that into here hopefully you can see it will just start mixing together I'm hoping it will just add a bit of random variation to the skin itself uh, a bit more of the green Stick a bit of brown on there as well. Okay. I think the green actually has worked a lot nicer than the others, so I'm going to put a little bit more of that in there. I don't think the camera's very well picking it up very well, but there are a lot of tints of green into this, which I think is going to help uh, just kind of bring out that dark seed colour. But I said at least <clears throat> from the reference pictures that I can see. Go back to the the watered down nan oil. Whilst that's drying, I've just got some uh, more alcohol ink. This is watermelon. It was the only red one I could find. And um, what I've done is I've mixed it with uh, just a, this is just my bottle of IPA. So I just use this occasionally when I want to really thin down the ink. So just drop a bit in. Um, I've mixed it up with the IPA. And I started laying it onto this. So this is the hand part, the eyes. But I also want to get it onto his eyes itself. So I want this to be very, very watered down. I mean, extremely watered down. What I'm, what I'm trying to do is just tint this fractionally. <clears throat> uh, I've actually just switched over to Ruby, so it's just a little bit of a darker red. It's 
felt like this was coming up a little bit too orange and the lights in there were already orange so it'd be nice to have a slightly different tone to the rest of this model So I um I've started just going around some of these darker areas, uh, sort of like deeper areas of the armor. <clears throat> so just a bit some pointing out like the edges, and just again going around them with a bit of non oil, just to add a bit of depth uh, and a bit of variation between the blues. I just felt like it was it was a bit overbearing. Um, so there is that. Um. Oh yeah, sorry. So the next thing I was doing is uh, I've got some black paint very lightly put on a bit of a skanky brush. And I'm just kind of dabbing it onto the skin and occasionally using my finger to, to smudge it even further. Um, the reason for that, as I said, like I just saw a lot of pictures where I, I can't really explain it other than sort of a, a, uh, like a dinosaur style skin or predator style where there's just a lot of I don't know, marks, pigments, I'm not sure what you'd call them. Um, but just, yeah, just going around. You can see there's some spots where I've just used uh, too much water in the wash. So I might as well cover those up while I'm at it. Um, and hopefully you can see it's just adding a slight worn effect to it. <laughs> over to the um, the armor I've got iron breaker it's a slightly lighter silver shade um, and two brushes so one very small dry brush it's officially a medium oh it's small um, and then just a much much bigger brush so I'm going to start off with the big brush um, and this one I'm going to use a dry brush still so rub it off on a tissue but just not as much as I might normally do um and the reason for that is sometimes it will just leave streaks over things and that I'm okay with. So just grab a dry tissue. I just want to be able to start bringing out some of the edges on this. Be careful of the skin still as well. I'll come back with a smaller dry brush, but this is just to save time and oh, I just, as I said, I find the big ones it'll get like little scratches and it looks better on silver. I mean, on, on a metallic. didn't end up using the uh, smaller dry brush but hopefully you see what I mean it just helps really bring out the detail kind of adds a bit more uh, highlight to the to the blue okay so what I've done uh, sorry again it was off camera is I've just mixed together some black and white I gave the face and this leg a dry brush because it was just they were just a bit too black from clean up. Um, I then added another layer of Anthonian camo shade to the skin, and whilst now this is dry uh, and so is the face, I'm going to do the same for those as well. So I'll let both those dry and then I'll get onto actually dry brushing some of the uh, grey over the skin. 
Okay, so um, it's all dry, and what I've done is I've mixed together. Oh, it's got a white, a black, and then a mix of uh, a mid grey. Uh, all just cheap acrylics again. Um, using a relatively large brush, which I'm now rubbing off on a tissue for a dry brush. And my plan is just to start building up this uh, sort of light, well, dark grey tone and then over to a light grey tone just on the skin. Hopefully it will just knock down the green a little bit and help me bring it up to um, a more stone grey. Okay, uh, I think I'm happy with that. Um, so I'll give that a minute to try and then come in with some of the finer details. So whilst I've got the um, the grey out, I'm uh, I'm going to create like a really watered down dark grey. I mean, like really watered down. I'm just going to use that to tint the, um, the uh, fingernails. That should do the job. Okay. Um, Whilst that's drying, I will quickly get some Zandri dust. Um, <clears throat> I've already actually done a, a quick base coat on the um, on the teeth just a few hours ago. <laughs> the next thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is um, I feel like the, the purple's been knocked out of it completely, so I'm just going to quickly get some more purple in the airbrush and just hit it from some of the major points, just so it's that that purple tint is back in the um, back in the armor. Okay, so try now trying to be as neat as possible. I've got some metallic purple in the airbrush, and I'm just going to try and really from underneath now just add some of that purple back into the. the the armor. Okay, so um, I've now added the weapon and painted it silver, just with no belcher, so nothing special. With the base, what I'd already done before is I sprayed the thing black and then I got an airbrush with red and just went into all the corners. It was mainly because I didn't feel like there was m the, the black had fully got into everywhere that I wanted it to, uh, but also I'd kind of like to create a glowing effect. So. Um, what I'm going to do firstly is get everything to be silver, um, see how the red looks and then decide yeah, where I want to go from there. So uh, again with Lead Belcher, um, I've got, it's not a dry brush but at the same time it's, I'm not steeping it heavily with 
with uh, with paint. It's just enough to get it over everything, but it will still miss the cracks. So I'm going to go over everything with this, probably two, if not possibly even three coats. <clears throat> and uh, yeah. So apologies uh, when the battery went again I did uh, finish off the base so I just carried on going around with lead belcher and then I finished it off uh, with the additional dry brushing of storm uh, storm host silver so now just coming back up um, I also added a where is it uh, no oil sorry i did at first i did um first i did an agrax earthshade wash and then i did a non oil wash on the weapon uh, sort of random new weapon they created so now what i want to do is take some of this um iron breaker so the one in between lead belcher and storm host silver get some of that on my brush again so uh, big brush and as I said mostly put it, take most of it off on a dry on a, on a tissue so it's going to be kind of like a dry brush now just want to start going over all of this again not too heavy <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> now I'm going to go up to Stormhost Silver. And just kind of hit the, the top parts of the model now, also where the, the light would be a bit more focused. So next I'm going to get out the airbrush um, and start to put some yellow into uh, the cracks of the base. So I'll come back in a second. Okay, so I've now got some uh, flash kits yellow in the airbrush. Um, and the aim <clears throat> is to basically go into all of the areas where I have red just to create a starting glowing point. And then I'll go back over it with red to create that kind of um, uh, what you get from flames, like the, the reflective glow. So it's very really exciting. I don't know how much of it I'll catch on camera. So use some of the yellow to pre-highlight the um, the weapon. So I just added two layers, one to kind of get a, a wider effect and then a second one to sort of make it a bit stronger towards the centre. I'll then have to still do the red and then the yellow back again over the top, but I just thought this would be a nice, a nice starting point. Um, another thing is, I know it's not uh, sort of movie accurate, but I, I just I always like the... The, the straps or of, of weapons to have a colour. Um, also, I felt like it's a bit of purple would break this up a little bit nicely. So now I'm just going to uh, use Nagaroth Knight, so a base purple colour, and just paint all of the uh, these straps here. now got some uh, Mephiston red in the airbrush and I'm just going to try and kind of re-add the glow back over the um, over the yellow so I'll be kind of going away from the the crack so the I don't know the 
the edges are red, but the center's still yellow. slight glow under the uh, sort of just on the lower legs and the weapon, just a tiny tiny bit So I'm going aiming for more the outer parts of the camera. So I'm now going to come back and <clears throat> just hit it with a slightly darker red. Okay, so I've now got um, corn red uh, in the airbrush. And I just now want to kind of really just hit the, the furthest extremes of the um, of the red that I've already, already put on. Just to help build up that gradient before I go back in with the yellow. some non oil and just gonna put that apply that onto the uh the purple <laughs> okay I'll let that dry and then I'll probably do a second coat. So <clears throat> now because it's it's got a hot look but it's obviously metal as well and metal when it um gets hot it turns white so I've got a white dry brush now, and well, dry brush with white. And I'm just going to start hitting over these edges quite carefully. <laughs> My storage ran out again, so I've just uh, finished off the dry. Brushing of white on the base, and I also did a, a little dry brush just into the centres of the um, of the weapon as well. Didn't make much difference, but I hope it will just help when when I um, use some airbrush with white in now. So. What I want to do is just start getting the white to build up in the centre. Might have to go back and forth with the yellow a bit because I feel like I've dialed that out a bit too much. But now I'm going to come in with yellow, uh, and this time I'm going to try and get it in between, but I'm going to still go back over with the. Uh, So we'll go back in over it, uh, the white again. Now I'm 
come back in with white. So now what I want to do, I've sort of got the white centre <clears throat> and start building up the strength of the white towards the centre itself. So I'm just for a second going to put my airbrush down and just pick up a relatively fine brush. Use the same white. Really thin that down. So it's really white on white. All I want to do is just get that thick line in you can see the hell of a so this is the final piece uh so i'm very happy um sorry the phone did cut out so after i added uh brush painted in the white line i then went back in with an airbrush just to hit some white over it to help with the glow effect um i wouldn't say i'm overly happy with the base or the, the glowing of the base but i said it will do for now um and other than that, yeah, I'm really happy with this model. This is a uh, dark side from Berserk Studios um, Patreon. So they do have a Patreon page where they release a couple of models a month. And I think this was last month's model. So yeah, definitely check them out. Really happy with this model. Dark side from Berserk.